And hey guys, welcome back to the channel, back with Midwest Express. So, so there is a lot of news in the gig economy. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about Uber, Walmart, Spark, Grubhub. And the first thing is Uber. So Uber has recanted their Diamond Cash Award. So uh, this month, uh, every, every quarter Uber does this. If you make it to Diamond and stay diamond throughout the quarter, you'll earn a cash reward, and that could be anywhere from three to $800, depending on the market you're in. So, but Uber has now renegotiated that apparently with us because mid-month, they decided that they were going to just roll those points over to May. And if you earned any points toward your cash, diamond cash reward, that goes to May, and that they're not gonna be paying it out February, March, and April and for this quarter. And I was thinking to myself, why are they doing this? Well, they're doing it primarily because they have more drivers than they have customers. It is a slow time of the year. And with all the drivers, why would they pay out a cash reward to anybody? They'll just postpone it and push it off. Now, you'll still earn diamond status and everything else for your points for this quarter, but the cash reward is not happening this quarter. So I thought that was very interesting. I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on that. Leave your comments below if, if you are an Uber driver and, and just the, the Diamond Cash Reward program all in all is kind of a farce myself. But continuing on with the news of what's going on, Grubhub this week announced that in my market, they are now doing CVS uh, shop and pay orders. Now, it's like a shop and deliver order. That's exactly what it is. But... You have to have your Grubhub card on you to actually pay for it. So you're shopping, paying for it, kind of like an Instacart. And that's a change for Grubhub because Grubhub has pretty much always stayed in the food like market. Not groceries, not uh, so much uh, CVS or a Walgreens or any kind of pharmaceutical stuff. So it's kind of changing it up in my area. They're saying that you can earn an additional $7 per order for these type of orders over a normal one. So I don't know if that's just an incentive now or if that's gonna be the standard now, but it's just another way for us to make a couple more bucks along the way. Um, also, I noticed that Walmart, you know, Walmart came out with their drone program back, I wanna say a couple months ago, and that was all the hype. And Walmart has a way of coming out and touting innovation all the time. and one of the innovations that they were touting about two years ago was that they were going to have autonomous driving vehicles, self-driving vehicles that would, vans that would pull up, door would open, customer would come out, grab their material, the van would drive away. And they were teaming up with Ford and Ford Cruise to do this autonomous program. Well, back in October this year, Ford came out and said, yeah, we got a lot of federal funding for this autonomous program and the EV program, but uh, yeah, it's just not financially worthwhile for us to continue down this road. We don't have enough of demand to do this program. So they have pretty much abandoned their whole autonomous vehicle program. And that is pretty much a death blow to the Walmart innovation of autonomous delivery. Now, what other programs did Walmart hype up? If you remember these vehicles, these pretty canoe vehicles, which were uh, electric vehicles that would have a range of about 500 miles. And uh, they agreed to buy 4,500 of these vehicles and they were gonna be on the road, purchased and on the road by 2023. They're not on the road. <laughs> In fact, canoe is struggling. Canoe is struggling badly. When this was announced, this deal with Walmart, canoe stock, went as high as $10.45 per share, which was pretty high for them. Now, Canoe stock is 15 cents a share. It has plummeted. Canoe is on life support. They have restructured their board, their CEOs, like they are struggling just to stay afloat. And that is the struggle with a lot of this new technology. I mean, we all get you know, the magic of AI and everything that's kind of happening around us is real and it's right in our face. But a lot of this technology costs money. And when people are cheaper than the technology, people will continue to do that job until the technology 
value outweighs it. And that kind of brings me to today's uh, CPI inflation numbers. Uh, so the federal government comes out with these numbers every month, tells us where the inflation's at, and it pretty much stayed uh, right where it was or got a little bit hotter in some of the industries. And people are a little panicked because before the year ended last year, the Federal Reserve was saying they, you know, they were like, we see possible cuts next year. And everybody anticipated they're going to cut like five, six, seven times. They're going to lower interest rates. We're going back to 2% interest, you know, and everybody got really excited. And the stock market took off and had record numbers. Well, now people were like, oh, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell came out a couple of weeks ago at the Fed meeting and said, yeah, we're, it's probably going to be like three cuts and we're not going to see one till probably May. So everybody's like, okay, all right. Well, he said May, but there's no way they're just going to do three cuts. People just want to keep that hype. They want to say the economy's good. The market's good. So now this new inflation number came out and things are a bit hotter than they planned. And people are like, well, what are the industries that are are doing well and, and how has this affected us? And the things that they've realized is food's not really getting cheaper. Only thing that really seemed to be getting cheaper out there is used cars. Used car prices have been coming down. And, uh, you know, with the demand and the supply, you know, coming out of the pandemic, there was no parts to repair vehicles. There was such a problem with getting vehicles, but now they're becoming abundant and used vehicles are coming down and used car dealerships are going out of business trying to get rid of their their inventory because the longer they hold that inventory the less the value cars that sit still don't do well they have to be run they have to be driven so with these economic changes i thought it was very interesting that they were also talking about how housing you know with interest rates not coming down uh blackrock big corporation still buying residential properties out there they are still trying to corner the market and drive prices higher with housing. And people look at it, and you know, I look at it, as many apartments as they've built in my market, we're like, why are they having any housing issues? Well, today I think Jim Cramer, he's on CNBC, he made a real easy statement this morning. He said, we've had an influx of almost 8 million people into America in the last year and a half. That's a lot of people that have come here. They need to live somewhere. And where are they living? They're living in apartments. They're living in houses. And that's what's driving up the cost of housing is we have such an influx of people coming here. And, you know, they are doing the work that a lot of people don't want to do. But if you're in the gig economy, you're saying, hey, I'm getting additional, you know, competition here. Because when they come here, you know, we're all happy if they take the jobs as gardeners, nannies, work in construction, drywall, all the jobs that nobody here wants to do, right? But when they start getting into your Walmart Spark competition or your, what I call, easy money. Easy money is doing food delivery, you know? Doing a delivery for 10 bucks for a couple miles, picking something up, dropping it off, ringing a doorbell, taking a picture, or leaving. That's easy money. That's not, the sweat equity is very low in that. So, of course, a lot of the immigrants want to get into these gigs as well, so... It's just, it's a doggy dog world <laughs> and things are getting tougher. The only ones that are getting in the catbird seat right now are companies like Uber, where Uber is like, yeah, we have more drivers than we ever need. We don't have to give, you know, all these incentives. We don't have to support the diamond reward program. We don't have to do all these things because there's people here that will take these jobs for, for less. And that is the biggest hurdle with everyday gig work nowadays is if you don't take it, somebody else will. So everybody's just sitting here going, I'm not worth that. I, 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 need, I need more money than that to make this delivery and based on mileage and costs and everything else. But there's other people that are driving hoopties and they'll do that ride. So like to know your guys' thoughts and opinions. Leave them in the comment section. I don't always respond, but I love to read your comments. It makes uh, interesting days for me and gives me a lot of content to share with other 
drivers out here. So make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll hit you on the next one.